Well, hello there. It is a lovely Thursday afternoon. We've got the blue sky. We've got sunshine. It's a little chilly, but not too cold. It's just the way I like it. It's a lovely day for a walk. And that's what I've come out for is my daily walk. I like to walk 10,000 steps a day if I can, but I'm bringing you along with me today because I want to start doing something on the vlog that's that's been in the back of my mind for a little while now. If you've seen my previous videos, then you may have heard me talk about the old uh, hole in the wall restaurants that you used to be able to find in every neighborhood and how they're disappearing. And I've been wanting to go out and find more of them to see how many I can find out there that are still in the little neighborhoods. You know, mostly these days you find them around local markets and stuff, but I, I want to go out to neighborhoods where there aren't necessarily any markets and, and see if I can still find some of these little restaurants. And another thing is, you know, I'll have a favorite restaurant. A, a couple of times now I've, I've gone to visit a favorite restaurant that I wanted to show you for a favorite uh, places episode only to find it's shuttered. It's gone. It's not there anymore. It's in the process of being replaced by something else or has already been replaced by something else. That is a common occurrence. You know, you'll go to a restaurant for for two years and three years and you think, oh, wow, I love this place. Uh, I'm going to go there today and it's gone. Uh, the, these places just uh, come and go pretty quickly here in the city. So I'm always on the lookout for new favorite places. So I want to start exploring neighborhoods that I'm not so familiar with, either because I've never really been there or because I haven't been there in a long time, you know, and that's what I'm doing today. I've come out to Northwestern Seoul. Uh, I've come out of Bulguan Station and I'm going to walk up toward Yunshine Station. And up around Yunshine, there's been some development recently, but you've still got an old market up there and there's still some parts of the neighborhood that are a little bit older. Uh, I lived up there for a couple months in 96 or so. And uh, it, it was a nice uh, nice little area to live. They had some nice little mom and pop restaurants up there then. And hopefully there's there's still a few around there. And when I came out of Boulevard Station, I thought, you know, this, this uh, place looks a little promising, but then I look behind the main street and most of the buildings are new, newer. So there's been a lot of development here even if some of the buildings on the main street are older. So I'm not uh, not optimistic that I'll find anything of, of interest in terms of little hole in the wall restaurants uh, on the back streets here. Okay, so I got a little bit uh, distracted by, by this market that I did not expect to find here. I didn't know it was here. And uh, yeah, this is just a sidewalk market from what I can see it just follows the sidewalk and lines the sidewalk on either side I don't see any alleys or streets that uh, go back into the into the block here as part of the market so yeah there's there's nothing on down the side side streets so it is a small market but uh, a lot of stuff here even so and it looks good especially since i'm hungry <laughs> but my mission today is to find some restaurants some old restaurants not to shop at a market but wow looks like it uh, keeps going for a while here it uh, may be bigger than i than i realized
So just when I thought I'd come to the end of it here, it does bend now into the local neighborhood here, but there's uh, not a lot here. I don't see any people along this way. They were all out on the sidewalk portion of it. Yeah, this, uh, this doesn't look too promising to find. This area doesn't look like a promising spot to find uh, the kind of restaurants I'm looking for. We've got uh, some, I don't know, late 90s maybe, early 2000s, late 90s era villas. One thing about exploring Seoul neighborhoods is even when you're around, you know, in these areas with, with these you know, low-rise apartments like this, the villas, you still sometimes run into places like this. That somehow are still standing. And haven't been torn down yet. So you find you find places like that all over these days. The newer, more modern um, restaurants, clean. <laughs> Okay, and you know, like here, this is a kimbap place. Even the kimbap places are modernized these days. It's uh, even got cafe in the name. Yeah, I'm not gonna find uh, the kind of place I'm looking for in this area. that we are in Umpyeonggu, Umpyeong district. It's, uh, you know, the northwesternmost district of Seoul. It's touches, its borders touch on, I think, Mapo-gu and Sodemung-gu and maybe even Jongno. But it's not one of the better known districts, right? But there is a point of interest out here called Umpyeong Hanok village that I still never been to actually. And I want to visit one of these days. But yeah, this is definitely a part of Seoul that is not touristy. And if you're looking for, you know, a local experience, Umpyeonggu wouldn't be a bad place to go. And actually, especially around Yeonshine Station, because there are a number of little hotels and um, guest houses around there. And you've got line three, which takes you into the heart of the city, all the touristy areas, you know, Gwangamun and Myeongdong, you can get uh, to all of those areas from there. And you've also got line six, which can take you out to Hongdae. And neither of those destinations are far away, just a few, you know, handful of stops. So uh, this might be a good location to think about staying around Yongshine Station or even Bugwang Station. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, because of the cheaper hotel prices. Now, you're not gonna get quality hotels probably, but you'll definitely save money on your hotel and you're not far from all the stuff you wanna see, except right now, maybe Gangnam. But once that GTXA line opens, Yunshine will have a direct connection to Samsung Station and it probably won't take that long to get there. So yeah, there you go. Uh, Yeah, so this, this place is a bit of an older place, but uh, it's not the kind of place I'm looking for. This is, this is what they call Bunshik, 
It's like a snack food, snack bar, basically. Um, and you can usually find them outside of schools. So like right here, we have an elementary school. And uh, so that's the kind of place that children and teens, they love to eat at as they're leaving the school or even, you know, just uh, places like that around their neighborhood. Yeah, Boonchik. So, you know, I like Boonchik places too. So the reason I'm walking through these back streets like this, looking for those restaurants is because this is where you used to find those kinds of restaurants, just, you know, into a neighborhood, almost any neighborhood, even if there were, you know, even if there was only one <laughs> on a street, I mean, you could walk deep into a neighborhood and you would stumble upon a little restaurant on a corner tucked away somewhere in an old building. Um, and usually you'd find little, uh, little shopettes or little, you know, mom and pop convenience stores, if you want to call them that, you know, deep into a neighborhood too. So there'd be one or two of those and one or two little restaurants. But yeah, these days you just don't see it. All right, so I decided to uh, grab a snack from uh, what is this GS or CU, one or the other. And I grabbed a chocolate bar I've never seen before. It's called Tokping. I got the peanut and honey variety. It's uh, on sale for, uh, I guess, two plus one. So 3,000 won for three. This is from Orion, which is one of the big uh, sweet manufacturers. And this, uh, yeah, it's got all the nuts and stuff on top instead of inside. They had a couple of other varieties too. I think hazelnut and granola and almond and granola, but those weren't on sale, so. Okay, I like this. Now, I admit my first several years here in Korea, I was not a fan of Korean sweets, Korean chocolate. Very, very few things uh, that I liked. Generally, I just found they weren't sweet enough for my taste. They just tasted very bland, and I just never really liked them. But something has shifted, and I think it's mostly me, but I, I do think that the Korean sweets are a little sweeter than they used to be. But also, my tolerance for sweets has significantly decreased from what it used to be. I just, there, there are some things, some chocolates that I used to love that I just can't stomach anymore. I just can't eat them. They're just much too sweet. So uh, yeah, I, I'm very particular about my sweets these days and I find more and more uh, that I'm eating, preferring even uh, Korean sweets too. All right, so we are a little bit west of Yenshine Station now and this street looks promising maybe for the kind of place I'm looking for. Okay, so I found some Ingobang. Uh, it was 2,000 won for three, and she had shoe cream and pot. I got the shoe cream, makes it nice and golden. And good, yeah, it's good. Now, if you saw the first video I uploaded on this channel, I did talk about Ingobang and Bungobang and the difference. And uh, Ingobang is usually made with, you know, um, chopsa flour, the glutinous rice flour. 
and the, the, the filling usually goes from the tail to the head all the way, you know, with bungo bang, it's usually just in the middle. But uh, yeah, good stuff. Okay, so this is the uh, area they call Apkujong, I'm uh, sorry, <laughs> Yanshine Rodeo. So used to Apkujong Rodeo. Yeah, I, I guess this might have been here when I lived out this way in the 90s, but if it was, I don't really, I don't remember it. <laughs> I don't know if I came through here or not. Yeah, I was only here a couple months, two or three months, and uh, didn't really explore the neighborhood to the full extent because I was so busy going back and forth, you know, between Itaewon and here and Gangnam and here. Having wandered around this uh, Yonshine Rodeo area for a while now, uh, I can definitely say it has a 90s vibe to it. Yeah. That's what it feels like. Oh, and here we go. Here's all the, the barbecue restaurants. And this, this, uh, this has a more of a early 2000s vibe. Reminds me of Gangnam. And if you ask me to explain the difference between a 90s vibe and an early 2000s vibe, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Okay, I still haven't eaten yet, and it is just after four. Been out here for a couple of hours now. Um, and so now I'm gonna head over toward the uh, market here. I keep calling it, I always call it Yenshide Market, but it's not Yenshide Market, it is Yenso Market. So yeah, there'll definitely be some food in here. I'm, I, I'm not sure I'm gonna buy anything here, but uh, if I get on the back side of the market, maybe I'll find the kind of restaurant I'm looking for. Or actually, maybe I'll find something in here, I don't know. But uh, if I don't find something soon, I will have to just give up and, and eat somewhere. Porridge. Jew. Bende dog. Uh, there's the eateries in there. I'm still holding out for a restaurant though. Oh, Tokabi looks good. Some side dishes, panchan. I bet you can get it uh, fairly cheaply here. Ah, here we go. Guksu 
kimbap. So the, the name of kabob, so the kal at the beginning means knife. And you have different kinds of guksu, noodle soups, uh, made with different kinds of noodles. But kalmusu, the, the noodles are cut with a, with a knife, so they put that in the name. Um, you know, noodles, I guess, usually are, 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 when you're making them, they spin them or, you know, pull them out of the, out of the, out of the dough. But kalmusu is, is cut. So if, you watch that uh, Netflix documentary uh, where the, the lady in uh, Guangzhou Market came up. She has a kalbuksu uh, place there in, in, in the market. And that's probably the most famous uh, kalbuksu restaurant in Korea now. Um, I've seen several, you know, uh, tourist vloggers, you know, travel vloggers who uh, have visited there and they all talk about the knife cut noodles. Yeah, so I never heard the term knife cut noodles until I started watching travel vlogs on YouTube. My kalbutsu is here and it is steaming hot. Look at that. And this kimchi is looking good. Aged, looks like. Hmm. Yep. Oh yeah, that broth is just right. Okay, now. The broth here is, is, is a little bit fishy. There's a little bit of a seafood taste to it. Um, sometimes kalgusu places do, sometimes they don't. But yeah, this, this is not bad. And I just had kalgusu a few days ago with some friends at a place that I'm gonna take you to later. One of my favorite places um, where they, they, hand, they, they make it there. It's, it's homemade noodles. I don't think they make the noodles here. I, I could be wrong, but I, I don't think they do. But anyway, this is uh, this is good. Yeah, it's not the best I've had, but it's good. It'll do. And I am gonna go ahead and eat this, and then I will walk you out. Oh man, that was good. I am uh, stuffed now. I ate all of it. I emptied the bowl, the broth and all. <laughs> now I am full. So. I didn't quite find what I was looking for. I mean, yeah, I found uh, some old restaurants over there near the market, but I really, really, really was hoping to find something just in the neighborhoods away from the market, um, just to prove to myself that, yeah, places like that do still exist. But yeah, that turned up empty. Um, of course, you know, I can always check neighbor map <laughs> for something but that kind of takes the fun away from it you know i i love exploring the neighborhoods even if i don't find what i'm looking for just walking through the streets that i haven't been down or probably won't be down again anytime soon and you know it's a good opportunity to show show the neighborhoods to you too so i will do this again um, in the future and with that i think i'm done so I appreciate you watching and sticking around this far into the video. And uh, thanks as always for liking and subscribing. If you are watching any of my videos and you're interested in picking up some more information, always check the description because now 
I have a website, mikefromkorea.com, where I am posting additional information and resources about some of the topics I talk about in my videos, some of the places, uh, some of the people, some of the history, and I'm slowly building it up. And as I do, I'll, I'll as I add more information, I'll come back to the older videos and add links to, to that information. And with new videos that I put out, uh, I'll, I'll try to keep uh, new information related to those videos current on the website to uh, get the link into the description as soon as I can after I publish the video. So yeah, uh, keep an eye out for that in my future videos. And as always, if you have any questions, please send them to Q&A at mikefromkorea.com. I'll save them up for a future Q&A video, but I'll try to answer, answer you directly uh, through email uh, once I have your answer. And that's it. See you next time. Bye-bye.